So this is the spreadsheet I'll be using for the demonstration. So this is a simple column chart that is giving me the comparison between the expected and actual cost of the gift items. So you can see that it is visually showing me the difference between the expected and actual cost as columns in the chart. Below you can see that the blue columns represent the expected cost and the green columns represent the actual cost. Now let's see the customization options we have for the chart. You must have already noticed the side panel here on the right. So this side panel gives you contextual options for the chart. So up first we have the various chart types that are being provided. So if you want to change the type of chart that you have drawn, you can just choose from here. And then we have the source data range. So if you wish to change the source data for the chart, you can do that from here. And then we have the option to choose where the series are in the data, that is in columns or rows. And then we have the option to choose the label for the chart. So here you can see that the first row and first column are checked by default. Let's see how the data is here. So on the left you can see that the first row in the source data is supposed to be the label for me as well as the first column is supposed to be the label for me because without these two labels my chart is not going to be understandable. So let's move on to the next option. So you can see an option called include hidden cells. So if you have any filtered data or hidden rows or hidden columns in your data, you can choose to include or exclude the hidden cells. Also you can see another option called auto expand that is checked by default. So when auto expand is turned on, if you have any data records that are being added next to the source range, those data records will be appended automatically to your charts. So now I'll show you how that works. So here in our data, I'm just going to insert a row and add a record. So on the right in the chart, you can see that the data record I had just added gets appended automatically. So this is how auto expand works. If you wish to turn it off, you can do that too. And then we have an option called aggregation. We'll look into aggregation in detail later on. So we'll just skip that now. And finally, we have an option called top or bottom N. Now let's say you want to see the three gift items that you had the highest expense on. So for that, you can just choose top here, choose three so because I want to see the three most expensive gift items in the list and then select the value by which you want to see the chart. So now I'll be seeing it based on the actual cost. So on the left, you can see that the chart changes accordingly. So these three items are the most expensive from the list I have right now. So in this way, you can narrow down and have more focus on the top or bottom values in your list. So now I'll just reset this chart again back to normal. So now you can also note that there's another tab here in the right side panel called customize. So once you click on that, you can find the various categories, which gives you the option to change and customize the various sections in your chart. So the first is chart and access titles. So you can note that we already have a chart title. If you wish to edit it, you can do it from here. Or you can also add a chart subtitle or titles for your horizontal and vertical axis too. So below that, you can find the formatting options too. So you have the font size, formatting styles, font color and alignment too. So second, we have the legends. So these two labels here that actually represent what the series in the chart mean are called legends. So you can choose the position of the legends in your chart. So now we have the legends placed at the bottom of the chart. I can even choose to have it on the right. But you can see that when I place the legends on the right, the actual chart is not having enough space. So I'm just going to place it back in the bottom. So based on the type of chart you have and the way you want it to be shown, you can change the position of the legend. If you need extra information about the series in your chart, you can add data labels to them. So data label can be a value, a label, or even series. And in some cases, it can be a percentage too. For now, I'm just going to add a sample data label here. So I'll choose value. And here in the chart, you can see that the actual values of each series, that is the cost is being shown for each series here. So now I'm just going to remove it because I don't want it in this particular chart. You can also note that the title, legend and data label text all have the formatting options given. So under series, you can find the options to have a threshold or a trend line in your chart. So we'll see how we can add a trend line in another example. So for now, we'll just move on. So next is the horizontal axis customization. So here you can see an option called reverse axis order. So when you just click on that, 
you can see that the chart's horizontal axis just gets reversed. All these options are based on the way you want the chart to be displayed. So it's all for your convenience. And then second, you have an option called labels. So if you wish not to show these labels here in the horizontal axis, you can simply uncheck this option here. But you can see that without those labels, this particular chart is meaningless. So I'm just going to turn it on. And you can also see various customization options for the label. So there's an option here called slant label. And you can see that there are three angles that are provided for you based on which you can position the way the labels are shown. So I'm just going to click on zero degrees here. We'll see how that changes in the chart. So once I click on zero degrees, you can see that. So you can see that there's no slanting angle at all here in the label. So now when I choose 45 degrees, that makes my label slanting. So this way I can actually view the whole labels here. And then we have the option for vertical axis customization. So there's an option here called multiple Y axis. So we'll look into that later on with a perfect example. And similar to the horizontal axis, you can see there's an option here for you to display or not display the labels in the vertical axis too. If your vertical axis scale is not representing all the series in your data, you can also choose logarithmic scale just to have a clear understanding in your chart. You can also choose to have a plot line inside your chart along with the label and the value. So if you, if you want to have an average expense value that, is, that has to be shown in the chart, just to see how many items have exceeded that particular value, you can draw a plot line. And here you can see an option called units or scale factor. So using this, you can choose the unit using which the vertical axis scale must be represented. So now you can see on the left that my chart actually does not need any uh, units from here for now. So we just close it. And then we also provide the option for you to change the number format of the vertical scale. So when it comes to charts, charts being visually appealing is also an important factor. So that's why we have various styling options too. So first you can see that Zoho Sheet provides you with predefined color themes that you can use for your chart. So we have six themes that are provided along with monochromatic themes that are given. And you can also customize these themes based on your choice. So I'm just going to select another theme here and see how the chart changes. So, so now you can see that on the left, the chart looks more vibrant. So you also have the options to change the font family, the background color, border color of the chart, or even the transparency or opacity of the chart. You can also choose to have gradient in your chart. You can also see the options to show major and minor grid lines. So these lines here that you can see in the chart are the major grid lines. So now I'm just going to turn on minor grid lines. So these are the minor grid lines that will be shown in the chart. So these major and minor grid lines can be used for a better understanding of the uh, value of each series in your chart. So for now, you can see that this, these minor lines are not having a purpose in this particular chart. So I'm just going to turn it off. And then you can see an option here to create the 3D chart. So once I turn on 3D here, on the left, you can see that the chart has become a three dimensional chart. So this way you can choose to have your chart the way you want. So now I'm just going to turn it off. And then you can see some options here called tooltip and animation. So when you hover over the series in your chart, you can see the actual value of each series being represented in the form of tooltips. So you, if you do not want these tooltips to be displayed, you can just turn them off using the option in the side panel. While most of the customization options in the side panel are common to all the chart types, there are certain options that are specific to certain chart types. Apart from the uh, various styling options that are provided in the side panel, Zoho Sheet also provides you with contextual menus that you can use for styling your chart. So when you want to use the contextual menu, just uh, keep the side panel open on the right and just click on the part of the chart that you want to edit. So now let's say I want to edit the background of this chart. I just select this chart here and choose a background. So when I want to change it back, I can simply choose it again. And if I want to change the legend or the chart title, I can just click on the chart title and that will show me the formatting options for the title. So this way you can contextually edit um, the desired part of a chart.
these three dots represent advance options in a chart you can use these options to move clone delete a chart even download a chart as an image or even publish the chart for sharing so we're not going to look further into these options right now so we'll just move on